What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm super excited to give you guys my review of the Aimee Leon Dor collaboration with New Balance on this 990v6 in the incense colorway. So depending on who you ask, this can be considered either an actual collaboration or an exclusive colorway given to Aimee Leon Dor, which released alongside their spring and summer 2024 collection. So these dropped officially on their website on February 22nd for a retail price of 220 US dollars or a shocking 355 Canadian dollars when you convert their site to Canadian currency shipped to Canada. So on their website, the colorway for this shoe is tan, but based off of the packing slip that I got, on that sheet, the colorway for this shoe is called incense. Regardless though, the official product code for this sneaker is U990CB6. And as of right now, when I'm recording this video, all sizes, I believe except size 13, are still available to be purchased. So before I go on any further, I want to address the elephant in the room, which is the fact that this collaboration, which I'm just going to call it that, is basically 99% the same as last year's Mindful Grey or Cream GR, which has a lot of people talking about, what's the point of buying this if it's that similar to a general release pair, which was put on sale and available to be purchased for a discounted price. So I'm going to give you guys more of a comparison between these two pairs later on in this review. So if that's all you're interested in, skip on to the end of the video where I'll address this a little bit more. First things first though, so here's a quick look at the packaging. So this is very similar to the GR Made in USA New Balance box, so it's still done in this cream color. We have the subtle oversized New Balance logo on the top, but the one thing that really distinguishes this pair and makes it in my eyes more of a collaboration is the fact that we actually have Aimee Leondor branding on the lid. But other than the branding over here, there actually is no more ALD branding whatsoever on the box or in the paper inside. So taking a deep dive into the sneaker, starting things off with the toe box, this is covered in this cream colored mesh and right above this towards the laces, we have a reflective panel here with New Balance branding in the center. Overlaid on both sides of the toe box, as well as the medial edge, we have a synthetic perforated nubuck in this sail or off-white color. And then surrounding the front toe cap, this is covered in more of a beige or dark tan color genuine suede and this runs down the entire length of the shoe. The same suede is found on the eyelets, but then the top two eyelets are covered in another reflective panel and a mix of silver and brown. And then underneath this, we have this oversized New Balance N logo. This is also constructed out of a reflective 3M, but it's done in more of a muted brown in the center, surrounded by more of a creamish tone on the edges. And then above this, we have more of that same mesh that we saw on the toe box. And then covering the bottom of the heel, we have another overlay of genuine suede, and then pressed onto the lateral side, here we have 990 branding. Above this on the heel, we have this TPU heel clip with a USA flag and Made in USA branding. This gives you a little bit of structure and support for the back end of the sneaker. And then the very top of the heel, this is covered in a perforated mesh in more of a brown tone. As far as the laces go, so these come with two different lace options. The standard lace that they come with is a wide and flat off-white colored lace, but they also come with a darker beige colored lace if you want to give the shoe a little bit more of a darker tone. Underneath this, the tongue is primarily constructed out of the same mesh that we saw on the toe box. However, we have more of a tightly wound mesh and a darker beige tone on the top, along with this large overlay fused on top with New Balance 990 V6 branding, which is done in a mix of silver and white. The back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe, this is covered in this white colored mesh, and just like any other 990 V6, the collar here is pretty thinly padded. As far as the insoles go, these come with a pretty decently padded foam lined insole. It's covered in a beige finish on top, and here we have New Balance and ALD co-branding, which is something you normally don't really see with stores that get exclusive colors, which is another reason why I consider this more of a pseudo collaboration than just purely an exclusive colorway. So the upper of this 990V6, it sits atop this very chunky foam midsole, which is crafted primarily out of New Balance's fuel cell technology. So for the most part, this midsole is painted in a uniform finish in the sail or off-white color. But in addition to fuel cell, we also have New Balance's end cap technology, which is a dual density foam setup consisting of a soft EVA core, and it's surrounded by a stiffer polyurethane rim, which helps to give the midsole a little bit more support. And then turning the shoe over to the bottom, so this outsole is crafted using a black colored rubber, and just like any other 990v6, we have this wavy style traction pattern along with these grooves to give you added flexibility. 
So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about sizing, I saw someone on Instagram left a comment on the photo that I posted saying how this version of the V6, it fit more wide foot friendly compared to some of his other pairs. But in my opinion, that difference was negligible at best. I'm assuming that's just more of a result of inconsistencies in the factory because I didn't really find that there was a noticeable or significant difference in the fit. So long story short, this pair fit me the same as any other 990 V6, so I personally prefer to go a half size down. My foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, meaning I got this 990 V6 in a size 9.5. To give you guys a point of comparison, I also wear 9.5 in other New Balance silhouettes like the 992, 993, and the 990 V3, V4, and V5. And in comparison, I stick true to size in other New Balance silhouettes like the 2002R, 1906R, the 991, and the 1500. So basically what I'm saying is the 990 V6, if you haven't worn it before, it's a shoe that runs a little bit more on the longer side lengthwise, but it can be a little bit snug width-wise around this area right here where the bottom lace is. But in my experience, while it may be a little bit snug straight out of the box, I personally just prefer to break them in after probably about two or three days of significant wear. That's where I really feel the width of the shoe becomes a bit more accommodating. But if you have a really, really wide foot or you just don't like to break in your sneakers, then you could go true to size, but this shoe does run a little bit more long, so you might have extra room in the toe box lengthwise or heel slippage. Moving on to the comfort, so these feel like any other 990 V6, which is a very comfortable sneaker. In fact, many people consider it to be one of the most comfortable New Balance offerings on the market right now. So the 990 V6 is a very comfortable shoe, but it's a shoe that feels quite unstable as far as comparing them to past 990s. So because of the fuel cell foam and how chunky this midsole is, it definitely feels softer compared to something like a 990 V4 or V5. Those models, especially the V5, I feel very stable and locked in and very, very supported. Whereas for the V6, it kind of feels like you're wobbling a little bit when you're just standing and it just has more of a dynamic feel underfoot. So it comes down to how you define comfort to be. If you're someone that likes more of the feeling that you're stepping on a mattress, for example, more of that pillowy and bouncy feel, this will be a great option. But if you're looking for more of a low to the ground, stable shoe, then I would probably not recommend this model. Finally, in terms of the quality and craftsmanship, so first off, material quality, I'd say that it was good, but because of the natural inconsistencies of suede between my left foot and the right foot, they were noticeably different in terms of how shaggy the suede was on the right foot, whereas how flat the suede was on the left foot. That's not to say it was bad quality, that's just the nature of leather sometimes. It's more so a call out to the craftsmanship or the quality control. So I definitely noticed that the panels, specifically on the toe box, they were cut a little bit different in size, and it just felt like the edges weren't as clean as they could have been. So maybe I just got really unlucky, but if anyone else is watching this and picked up a pair of these, let me know how was the overall build and the quality control on your pair. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet, I'll lace them up, and I'll show you guys how these look. So now that I've given you a proper breakdown of this ALD 990 V6, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how do these stack up compared to last year's Mindful Grey or Cream General Release. So holding them side by side, if you guys can see, let me just get them in focus right here for you guys. As you can see, they are very, very similar. They're basically like 90% the same, so I'm just gonna say it from the start. If you already own the cream colorway from last year, I don't feel like you need to buy this ALD collaboration because for the majority of people out there, when you're wearing these, people are really not gonna be able to tell the difference. But let's break down the most significant differences that I found between the two pairs. So first off, the base layer, AKA the mesh. So I feel like the cream colorway from last year, the mesh is ever slightly darker and has a bit more of a yellowish cream tone. Whereas the ALD mesh is a bit more subtle, it's a bit lighter and not as cream colored in tone. 
You also notice that the New Balance end logo is different. So the cream pair, this is done in two tones of silver, and it just stands out a little bit more compared to the ALD pair. It's done in a mix of this grayish beige with a cream colored outline, and it doesn't have nearly as much pop, but that's totally a personal preference thing. Also, the overlays on top of the mesh. So the cream pair, we have this smooth white colored synthetic overlay, whereas for the ALD collaboration, this is done in more of an off-white color, and this synthetic layer here is perforated. On the heel, this back tab is also different. So for the cream pair, the tab here is yellowed and we have the New Balance logo. Whereas for the ALD collaboration, this is more of a true white and we have the American flag instead. And then above this, this mesh layer, it's done in more of a brown tone on the ALD collab, whereas it's left in more white or sail on the cream GR. Also, if you look at the laces, I mentioned this earlier, but the laces for the ALD collaboration are noticeably and significantly thicker compared to the cream pair, which is more of a normal width lace. And then the tongue colors are different between the two pairs, if you can see here. And then as far as the midsole goes, so the ALD collaboration, this is more of a uniform, one color sort of finish. Whereas for the cream pair, you can see it's three distinct colors. We have cream on the forefoot, more of a beige on the heel, and white on the bottom heel. You also notice that the color of the rubber on the outsole is different. So for the cream colorway, we have a gray rubber outsole, whereas for the ALD pair, this is a black colored outsole. And another thing someone mentioned was that the shape of the shoes, are they different? And I have to say for my pairs at least, they're pretty much identical. Neither pair was more sleek or more banana-like than the other. It was basically the same. So if you look at them side by side, the overall shape is pretty much identical. And another thing to point out before I forget is this mud guard that runs along the bottom of the shoe. This darker tone cuts off in the middle, so it looks a little bit more disjointed. Whereas for the ALD collaboration, it just feels a bit more streamlined, a bit more refined, but it doesn't nearly have as much pop as the cream colorway. So determining which one you like better is entirely subjective. I've kind of spoke my mind about how the ALD collaboration it just feels a bit more refined, a bit more safe looking, and the overall color blocking on the shoe arguably flows better on the ALDs. Whereas for the cream pair, while yes, it looks a little bit more disjointed and there is a bit more variety in terms of tones and contrast, I like that it stands out in that way. There's so many cream colored shoes on the market right now that can be a little bit boring. So I like how New Balance kind of gave us something a little bit different, chopping up the visual flow of the shoe, slapping on some silver and some white to really make it pop. So that's pretty much my answer. If I had to choose one, I think I'm gonna go with last year's cream colorway. I just think it looks better. So that means I don't need this ALD pair. So leave a comment down below between these two pairs, which do you guys prefer? And what are your overall thoughts on the ALD pair? Do you like it? Do you think it's kind of redundant? However you feel, let's talk about it. And as usual, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check me out on X or Twitter at sean.go spelled out, and visit my website at seango.ca. So thanks so much for watching, hopefully you guys enjoy this review, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.